All right, for question three, it says the question involves analyzing and modifying a string. The following phrase class maintains a phrase in an instance variable and has methods that access and make changes to the phrase. Uh, you will write two methods of the phrase class. So I'm looking at this, and the things that I'm noticing is that I keep track of current, current phrase. Um, I've got a constructor, which is okay, it's already written. I've got a method called find nth occurrence. Uh, given a string and the integer n, it's going to find out how the nth occurrence of something. And if it doesn't show up after the nth time, then I'm going to get a negative 1 out of it. Um, then I've got this replace nth occurrence, uh, which uh, takes a string and replaces all instances of a string with a particular replacement string. And we're going to have to write that code. And then it's got a, function, a method called find last occurrence, and we're going to have to write that code as well. So, looking at what we've got here, uh, here are some examples. So I have the phrase, a cat ate late, and we can return at with rain, but we're only replacing the first occurrence. So here's the first time at shows up, and we're replacing it with rain, and that's where we get crane from. Notice that the at over here is actually the second occurrence, so it doesn't change, it's still at over here. Then if I replace the sixth occurrence of at, well, there's an AT and there's an AT and there's another AT. There is no sixth occurrence. There are three occurrences here. So nothing's going to change. And same thing's going to happen if I try and everywhere I see a BAT, it's not going to replace it. Uh, so I get the exact same string as well. So let's say I have AAAA and I replace the first occurrence of AAAA with XX. Well, that's going to give us XXAA. Here I've got AAAA and the second occurrence, well this is the first occurrence, the first AA. Then the second occurrence is going to be the second A along with the third A. And that's what actually gets replaced with the BBB. So keep in mind that first thing I notice is that it only changes once. Nothing else is going to change. So here it only changed once, here it only changed once. Nothing else is going to change. And if this if the string doesn't appear or if this number is out of bounds, there's not going to be any change. So those are the two things I have to watch out for with this idea of replace nth occurrence. So um, notice that they tell us that um, we have this method called find the nth occurrence and now I just want to replace the nth occurrence. So I can assume that this works correctly and I must use it to receive full credit. So what I need to do is I have to go through and find out first if this value is negative 1 nothing's going to happen. But if this value isn't negative 1 then I'm going to have to make a change. So looking at this I'm going to go ahead and say int spot is going to get the result of find nth occurrence. At that particular string for that particular value of n. And if spot is equal to negative 1, then we're going to return. Notice I can just do a plain return because this is a void method. Now if I get past this return, then that means spot is not negative 1, and that means that this string shows up somewhere in current string, so I need to replace it. So I need to go everywhere up to spot, and then from this point on, wherever uh, str would normally end, I want to replace that on. And I want to replace str with REPL. So I'm going to say that current string is going to get, and I'm going to piece this together. Notice it starts at position 0 and goes on to whatever position spot is. So this is going to be using substring. So it's going to be current string dot substring starting at 0 and going to spot. And I'm going to concatenate that with the string that I want to replace. I want to replace it with REPL. And I want to continue concatenating with the rest of the word, but this 
if this was spot, then this is going to be spot plus whatever the length of string is. So I'm going to be doing current string dot substring with spot plus str dot length. And remember that substring has two options. It has the two parameter which gives us a starting point and ending point, but it also has the one parameter version in which case it just gives us from that point until the end of the word, and that's really what we want. So I'm going to have everything from position 0 to position spot unchanged. And then from spot to whatever str plus length, spot plus that str length, that's going to be replaced with REPL. And then from this, which is spot plus whatever str dot length, from this point on until the end of the word is going to stay the same. And then I'm done, so we're going to go ahead and return. So very straightforward what we're doing here. We're just replacing the nth occurrence, but we have to find the nth occurrence first. We assume that it works, and if we don't use it, then we're not going to receive full credit. And that's because string has methods that work very similar to this already but they're not part of the AP subset. They're not part of the AP code, the code that the advanced placement exam expects us to know for Java, for the AP. So they're expecting us to use the methods that have been written in our class. So in other words, we're going to have to use this find nth occurrence even though we have no idea how it's used. All right, so the second part of this is that we have to find write the phrase method find last occurrence. So if I'm looking for the last occurrence, it's going to tell me the last time that something happened. So if I'm looking for the last occurrence of AT, well there's an AT and there's an AT and there's an AT, so that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That A is at position 11. But if I'm looking for the last occurrence of CAT, that only happens here, and that's 0, 1, 2. That's where we get the 2 from. But the word bat doesn't show up anywhere in this string, so that's where we're getting the negative 1 from. Now it's probably going to be the easiest thing for us to do is to just loop through and let the um, let this idea of find nth occurrence If I use find nth occurrence and let it start at 0 and then 1 and then 2 and then 3 and so forth, and as soon as I get some value that gives me a negative 1, I say, aha, it must have been the previous value that we were looking for. So that's the idea behind what we're going to write. Now, they tell us that we must use this in order to receive full credit, and that's because string has a last index of. And of course, it would be real easy just to say, oh, last index of whatever str is. And that's not going to give us full credit because they want to see if we can implement this method along with some semblance of logic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say int occur equals 1. So I'm going to look first in the first spot and see, okay, if I write find nth occurrence for the first spot and get a negative 1, then I'm going to have a problem. Otherwise, I'm going to need to keep going through here. So I'm going to, actually, I'm going to start this at 0 because I'm going to use a while loop. So while uh, find nth occurrence of str and occur, while that value for the next instance is greater than negative 1, then I'm going to occur plus plus. So let me talk about what's happening here. I'm starting off at 0, but then I'm seeing where's the first time that str comma 1 shows up. And if it doesn't work, then occur is going to stay 0 
and then I know that I'm going to have run into a problem. But as I go through this and say, okay, fine, if this is a one, search the second spot. If this is a two, search the third spot. Whenever I break out of this loop, occur is going to be the last time that we found it. So if occur is equal to zero, which means that this loop never got triggered because str never even showed up in the word. If that happens, then we're going to go ahead and return negative one. Otherwise, the last time we found it was when occur was at a particular value. So I'm gonna to want to return the find nth occurrence for str and occur. So in other words, if there were three occurrences of it, then that means when I was looking for the fourth occurrence of it, I failed, I got a false. So occur was still three. It's not zero. I know it shows up three times in here. The last time is the third time. And so that's what I want to return. So that's my code for this find nth occurrence. And again, they're asking you to use find nth occurrence here because it would be so easy to just say, oh, what's the last index of? And it would find it. But that's not what they're testing here.